<clears throat> we're back, we're back. What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. If it's the first time you're watching one of my videos, I'm officially a third year medical student. Uh, yeah, your boy passed his exams and I'm officially into third year. Uh, and I'm currently in Taiwan uh, doing a bit of research and a bit of clinical work uh, for my CV. Although I've been really busy recently, sorry about the lack of posts, uh, I really want to sit down and make a video to help you guys out with your personal statement. I know it's that time of year, I know the personal statement is coming up and it's hella hella stressful for you guys. Uh, so hopefully I can give you guys a few tips to help you get through the stressful period of time. This isn't a video about how to write, write your personal statement. This is a little video about the few tips I had, a few things I wrote down when I was writing my personal statement. Before I give you guys tips, I want to start by saying three points. Uh, the first point is, I made a video about a year ago last summer uh, about my personal statement. So if you want to have a look at my personal statement, go check that video out. The second thing is that if you do need help writing a personal statement, I do do personal statement reviewing. All the information for that is on my website. So if you want me to personally read your personal statement, go have a look at that. And finally, uh, if you can please take two seconds to like the video and give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. It really helps these videos help more people. All right, the first tip I have for you guys is to start early. A lot of people make the mistake of starting to write the personal statement two or three weeks out from submitting it. But I recommend starting as early as possible or at least just start thinking about it. So I remember during my medicine application, uh, we didn't have to hand it in until like October's time or something. Um, I actually started thinking about my personal statement during July. So while I was on holiday during summer, if I came up with something or something, you know, kind of hit my mind about what I want to talk about, I'd write it down straight away. So I'd recommend thinking about it in June slash July. Towards August, I definitely recommend uh, start putting pen to paper, start writing a few things down. And then towards the end of August, you will have it, you know, close to being finalized, you know, have at least a draft ready. And that way it'll give you enough time to give it to your peers, to give it to relevant people so they can review it, send it back to you and you can make the changes that are necessary to make it the best first statement ever. Once you have the first draft done, it really is in the end. You know, you're gonna send it off to teachers, they'll send it back to you. There'll be a bit of a back and forth motion until you finally get it done uh, to the final piece. So that's tip number one. All right, tip number two. Tip number two is really, really important and it's to make the first statement personal to you. Like, I know it's called the first statement and stuff, but sometimes it's really easy to forget, um, you know, how important it is to make it personal. And what I mean by that is to add something different. Add something to your personal statement that no one else no other applicant will have. You have to realize that when the admissions tutor are reading your first statement, they would have already gone through 10,000 first statements. So if you can stand out, if you can tell them something that they've never heard of, something unique to you, that will definitely give you some extra brownie points. So for example, uh, my way of sticking out was to talk about where I came from. So I talked about how I'm from Kenya, and when I was in Kenya, I used to go to the local slums and volunteer, and seeing what life is like for less fortunate people is really what inspired me to do medicine. So at the time, I really, really hope that no one else um, although it probably is unlikely, no one else came from Kenya, no one else kind of had the same opening line as me. And hopefully when the admissions tutor I read my first statement, they'd be like, oh, you know what? This guy's different, you know, he has something about him that I want to look, I want to read into, you know, I want to read more about. And hopefully that will catch the reader's attention and set yourself, set yourself apart from the rest of the competition. So that's tip number two. All right, tip number three is structure. Structure, structure, structure. Structure is so, so important. And the ability to kind of structure your first statement logically, to make it make sense, to make it flow properly, that really is probably one of the most important things to do with personal statement. You know, you can write as much as you want, write the most amazing work experience or whatever, but if it's not structured properly, the admissions tutors definitely will notice that and it won't look good. So I recommend having an introduction. So in an introduction, you know, talking about your inspiration to do medicine, something catchy to catch readers' attention. Uh, I then recommend going into the main parts, the main parts of your personal statement where you talk about your work experience, anything that's kind of added to your CV, um, anything that makes you shine academically and also kind of um, in terms of your work experience and everything. After that, I recommend having a small paragraph on your extracurricular list. Uh, so what do you do for fun? You know, do you work a job? Uh, do you play sports? Do you play an instrument? Uh, do you read books? You know, something about you and about yourself. And finally, I recommend having a conclusion. Uh, so a few sentences to kind of conclude your first statement to make them remember you and maybe possibly link your conclusion to your introduction to make it even more coherent. So that is tip number three. All right, so the next tip is kind of obvious, um, but it's to talk about the main things at least. Don't forget to talk about your inspiration to do medicine, why you wanted to do medicine, uh, your work experience. So, you know, the three types of work experience if possible, you know, that being uh, GP, hospital work and voluntary work. Uh, talk about your extracurriculars as well. Talk about everything you've done in school or university uh, that's, made you, that's made you suited for medicine. Make sure you tick all the basic boxes, you know. You want to make sure that you have what the admission tutors are looking for. Make sure you at least tick the basic boxes before moving on and make your personal statement different, make it unique. The next tip is to pay so much attention to your punctuation, grammar and spelling. I've definitely heard of people who've been rejected from medical school purely off their grammar and punctuation, as well as structure. This is probably one of the most important uh, aspects of personal statements. Make sure you read over personal statement at least, you know, 
1500 times. Like I'm joking, not 1500 times, but make sure you read it enough times to ensure there's absolutely no spelling mistakes, no grammar mistakes, no punctuation mistakes, no structural mistakes. The English has to be perfect. So if English isn't your first language, maybe consider sending it to one of your friends or one of your family members who do speak English fluently. Uh, maybe send it to one of your English teachers, you know, have them mark it, have them make sure that you haven't made, you know, one single mistake. You obviously don't want to be rejected purely just by your ability to uh, spell, to have the correct grammar. These are simple things that you can make sure that you get sorted out of the way so they can focus on the most important part of your personal statement, uh, like, you know, your work experience and everything else. So that's the next tip. All right, tip number six. Tip number six is to always make sure that you talk about what you learned, not what you did. I've reviewed so many personal statements where the person literally just lists off the things they've done. Like, I had this work experience, I did that, I did this. And although it is important to know what you did, it's even more important to know what you learned from it. There's no point talking about the most amazing work experience uh, and that's it. You really, really need to tell the interviewer, you know, what you learned about it, you know, show that you have the ability to reflect, show you have the ability to understand what you're learning. Because being a medical student, being a doctor really, really involves a continuous process of reflection. Like I've had to write so many different types of reflections in my first and second year about what I've learned. Uh, so get used to it now, uh, writing your first statement. So for example, if you're working as part of a multidisciplinary team, keyword MDT, multidisciplinary team, if you're working part of a multidisciplinary team, you know, don't just say you've done that. Talk about what you've learned as working part of a team. Talk about how you've developed your communication skills, uh, your ability to work as part of a team. And this will really show that not only have you done the relevant work experience, you've also learned from it. All right, next tip. I kind of mentioned this before, but don't forget about your extracurriculars. A lot of people focus on the first statements about their work experience, um, their academic achievements. And although this really, really is important, it also really is important to show the uh, admissions tutor that you're not just a robot. Medicine is a really, really stressful degree. Any other degree as well is very, very stressful. So you need to show them that you have the ability to wind down, you have the ability to control your stress. And actually in one of my medicine interviews, I was actually asked what I do outside of medicine, you know? How am I gonna cope with all the workload? How am I gonna cope if a patient dies, if I fail an exam? You really need to convince them that you're a well-rounded person and do a lot more than just read a book and study. So show them your talents, you know? Show them how unique you are. Search results. Uh, thanks for that, Google. <laughs> show them how unique you are. Show them how special you are. Show them how you're different. Show them what you can bring to university. So if you play a sport, tell them you play a sport. If you work a job, tell them you can work a job. They don't want to hear that, you know, being a junior doctor is your first job. Show them that you're musically talented. Show them that you're artistically talented. You know, show them all the new things that make you you. You know, medicine isn't the only type of intelligence. People have um, artistic intelligence. People have um, the ability to control their bodies. People have the ability to play sports. Medicine really isn't the only type of intelligence. And you want to show them that you possess more than one type of intelligence, more than just academic intelligence. All right, next tip. Next tip is make sure you don't have too many chefs. And what I mean by that is make sure you only give your press statements to a couple of people to review it. You know, you don't have too many chefs. Um, I made a mistake of sending my press statement to like five different people. Each person was different. Each person will view your press statement in a different way. Sometimes I'll send my press statement to one person to bring it back to me. I'd make a change. I'll send it to the next person and the next person will change it back to what the original thing was. You know, so every person is different. You might get conflicting advice. You might have people change it in the way that they want it to be. So I recommend choosing maybe two, maximum three people to review your first statement. Choose the people you trust. So maybe choose your personal tutor, uh, choose someone who is a doctor or in the medical field. Choose one of your teachers, like your English teacher to review grammatically. Uh, so for me personally, I chose uh, one, of my, one of my lecturers in university to review it. I, I got the careers advisor also to review it. And I think I got one of my uh, best friends as well uh, to review it for me as well. And also take the advice with a pinch of salt. So if someone sends their first statement back to you, uh, make sure you look at the advice and judge it for yourself. You know, don't just because they're just because they're a careers advisor doesn't mean they know more about your life. It doesn't mean that they know exactly what the admissions users will be talking about. So take the advice with a pinch of salt. Before you apply any advice, think about it, make sure it fits what you want to do, make sure it fits what you want to achieve, and then go ahead and add it to your first statement. Alright, the final tip I have for you guys is to give it a few days between the final draft and you actually going over it. When I had my final draft, I think I gave it about three or four days, completely not looking at my first statement, completely like not touching it, not thinking about it. Then I came back and reviewed it finally with a fresh mind as a fresh viewer. You know, give yourself some time to forget what you've written, uh, forget, you know, the structure, forget everything. Come back to it with a completely fresh mind, completely unbiased, read it one more final time. And then if you're happy with it, get ready to submit it. And hopefully that will work and you can finally submit your personal statements. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. I really hope this has helped you out in some way or form. If it has, feel free to send it to a friend who's also writing a personal statement. As I said, if you want me to personally review your personal statement, head to my website. Hopefully, we can work together 
Hopefully we can make your best statement, the best best statement ever, and get you into medical school. So if this video has helped you out, make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions at all to do with first statements or medicine in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.